Alright guys, welcome back and in this video I want to talk to you guys about not only one of the most important but also one of the most powerful tools that we have in the C programming language and this is called a loop. Now it's actually incredibly important because what this does is it allows you to run a certain piece of code over and over and over again as many times as you want. So I'll show you guys the structure for it right now. It's going to look kind of familiar to an if statement and it actually is really familiar to it. The keyword is while. Now inside the parentheses right after it you write some test and the test is pretty much the same ones that you could use for if statement and then after it you have the code that you want to execute. So let me show you guys a really simple um, example of a statement right now. So say that we have, I don't know, just get any variable to test. I'm going to name my tuna and I'm going to set it equal to 1. Now for the test, we'll just say, um, I don't know, is tuna less than 5? If so, print out something on screen. So print f and we can just write, uh, we'll just write tuna is now percent %d, which would give us the value of tuna. So pretty much what this is going to do is it's a program that's going to first set this variable of tuna equal to 1 and then it's going to test okay is 1 less than 5 as long as it is run this bit of code so if you run it right now it just says tuna is now 1 forever and ever and you guys see how this is blinking it's like printing it out a million times a second or however fast my computer is so now you're saying okay well that's kind of a stupid test because tuna is always going to be less than five unless you know the universe or math changes and that's probably not going to happen anytime soon so we need a way in order to end this loop we need a way to increment tuna if there is only like something called an increment operator or something oh that's why we learned the increment operator in the last tutorial so if you guys thought it was useless and you're never going to use it again Whenever you're using loops, you use it all the freaking time. So check this out. What we can do is change up our loop to say something like this. So what this is going to do is every time this loop occurs, it's going to add one to tuna each time. So if you run this, check it out. So the first time tuna was equal to one, it tested if it was less than five, printed out tuna, one did the same thing for 2, added 1, did the same thing until it got to 4, and then once it got to 4, check it out. Once the value of tuna was equal to 4, it said I'm going to test this again. Or excuse me, once it got to 5, it tested it one more time and it said, okay, is 5 less than 5? Well, that's when this test was false, so that's why it didn't print out tuna is now 5. So again, what a loop does is it basically loops something over and over and over again until the test becomes false. Pretty freaking sweet. So let me guy show you guys a really cool example of, um, actually I got a really cool example I can show you. So get rid of this and clear out everything except like the bare bones. So we just have an empty while loop. And this is actually something that you guys probably saw before. My math teacher taught it to me when I was in like, um, I don't know, sixth grade maybe. He's like, all right, would you rather have a million dollars right now or I can take a penny and double it every single day for a month and then you can have however much money that is at the end. And everyone was like, oh, I'll take a million dollars, million dollars. And so what he did is he actually figured it out and I will show you guys how to do that. So put int day and right now we'll just set it equal to one even though we're going to be running it for 31 days and for the penny we can just do float amount and set this equal to 0 0.01, one cent. So now what do we want to test for? Well we pretty much want to double it for 31 days. So we'll keep track of days and add one to it every single time this loop runs a process. So we're testing for days, so is day less than or equal to 31? As long as it is, continue this loop. Once it gets to day 32, then we can quit because there aren't any 
there aren't 32 days in a month. So the first thing I can do is just print out how much we have, just so we know. So print F, and I'll just put something like um, day percent D, and might as well give you a tab, and then we'll do amount, and then after this, um, we'll just go ahead and put the dollar sign, and then we'll build a float. Float. And new line. Actually, you want to do point two, new line, and of course the two pieces of info we need for this are day and amount. So this is pretty much gonna tell you on your first day you had one penny, tomato tomato, keep track of all of that for us. So after this, what do we want to occur? What do we actually need to program? Well, the only things we're going to be doing is taking our amount and we're going to be multiplying it by two. So remember that little shorthand I told you guys earlier, minus, or excuse me, multiplied equals two. It pretty much multiplies this by two and sets it as the new value for amount. So it's pretty much equals amount equals amount times two. That's all. Now after this, we need to add one today because remember, if we don't, then this program is just going to keep running forever, which isn't that bad because we keep making money, but you know, it needs to stop eventually. So I think we are good to go. Let's run it and see what happens. And i got to close out this. All right, check it out. So on day one, move this over so you guys can see the code. So on day one, you had one penny, it pretty much said, okay, of course the days one right now, which is less than or equal to 31, that is why I print that out. And then it goes ahead and it times your penny by two and also adds day, or excuse me, adds a value of one to day, so day is now equal to two. So then it tests the day. Is it less than or equal to 31? Yes, it is. Print that stuff out. And it did it all the way and your penny kept doubling. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. All the way until you got to day thirty-one. And check this out. Holy crap. Okay, I can't even read this. Okay, so we have ten million dollars seven hundred and thirty-seven thousand four hundred and eighteen. So whoever decided to double the penny was a lot smarter than whoever just took the million dollars on day one. Even though, you know what, I'd probably be happy with both. So that is what we did, and that is an example of an awesome way to use a loop. So if we didn't know how to use loops, then we would have to type this code um, pretty much 31 times, and it would be a pain. Our program would be like, I don't know, like 900 lines long. So now we could just do it in, what is this, five lines of code. Pretty freaking awesome. So again, that is what a loop is, and that's why one of the reasons why computers are incredibly powerful. So anyways, for now, hopefully you guys understood the concept. In the next tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about another kind of loop, which is pretty stinking awesome too. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.